We're going to bring this meeting to order at about 6.04 on my watch. Make it seem better than the school. <coughs> um, so we're reviewing and approving minutes of December 13th, which feels like last week. Um, Make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay, my only concern was just whether Jan couldn't approve the prior minutes because he <coughs> wasn't here for that meeting. So maybe this was an error on here that it says that Jan, but it's a very minor technicality. So if nobody's raising any objections to that, I have no objection. What? I was here. Are you guys following? No, you weren't here. I was here. But you weren't here to. Uh, I mean, all right. Not a big deal. I think you could still approve. Procedurally, you can still He's vote. He's just voting. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. But can you perfect. make the motion? No, he didn't. I made the motion. Right. He said he second the motion. Right. So ignore That's everything right. I said since we've called this meeting to order. Except <laughs> <laughs> I said with him second. Okay. But it would be best that Trevor doesn't move the minutes because he and I were here. Okay. So, oh, so, so uh, okay. okay. We'll get this down. No. We're gonna get this right. Yeah. So I'd so, like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I'll second that. Okay. Sounds great. That's okay. Right. Uh, all in favor? All right. Aye. 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 So moved. And uh, we're gonna move on to the financial statement warrants. So you only have four warrants to sign tonight in the total of $43,987.95. Uh, my apologies that I forgot to send out this uh, report earlier. I've just been so immersed in the budget that I, I had this done like a week ago and, I'm like, and then I just forgot to email it. So I did print out a copy for you. Um, we're we're doing good on our budget. Um, I'm the, I don't have any areas of concern at this at this point. Okay. I thought I saw something as I was classroom assistants. I think classroom assistants. Yeah. That was yeah. So I, I, ex, um, I explained at the last meeting that um, we have some payroll savings in the hires. <coughs> so what I'm doing is I, is, I'm taking payroll off of school choice and putting it on the local budget so that we're using that money before the school choice money. So I'm going right. to use up the savings. There are savings elsewhere. Yes. Clearly that gotcha. we can see. So that explains it. Okay. Yes. And now that you've mentioned it, I remember that you told us. Okay. But two of us weren't here, so we didn't. Oh. That's perfect. Okay. Yeah, I saw. When do you, I would just question, um, just when do you typically bill for um, central office expenses like phone and that kind of stuff? You we, happier? we do, we usually do December, it should be in um, December and we do it in June um, and okay. our auditors would like us to do it more often so we've been, mm -hmm. we were trying to get on a quarterly basis and but we, our, it, we just don't have our, a billing system that, that makes it strong. So it is on my um, agenda to get with Brenda Antes next week and get everything through December billed out. Okay. Because what we would do is we would just take the budget and bill half, and our auditors want us to take what we actually spent right. and bill that. Okay. So but that's on our agenda. So it'll be February, and then it'll probably be June. It'll probably be encumbered in June for the second half. And then are we allowed to encumber transportation or is that something that just, you know, bother encumbering? I'm um, just curious. What. We have been working with trying to get everything encumbered, um, but we've run into two issues. The person that's going to do the training to uh, for the module fell ill. Okay. And we also have to buy a bigger server. So Scott yeah. Paul and his team are working to get that new server uh, because we're going to go from a very small user population, there's like six of us that use it, gotcha. to almost 40 people using wow. it. So we had to buy a bigger server and so that's being installed and we're waiting for our trainer. We don't want to train when they don't have it at their fingertips because right. that Makes won't sense. help. Yep. So we, our, our goal was September with her illness, it got pushed back to January. Now with the uh, server, it, it's probably going to be more realistically by spring. March. Okay. I was just curious. I know that you've been encumbering a lot more lately. I I manually encumber all the salaries every month. Yep. 
Okay. Great, man. That was it, right? Any more Thank questions? You. All right, moving right along. Uh, any public comment from the masses? <laughs> Assembled multitudes. All right. Uh, so, discussion items. Update on a search for a principal for this esteemed institution. Can you cover that? Yes, I uh, am really excited to announce due to a groundswell of support from the Deerfield Elementary School staff and community, the decision to appoint Tina Jem as the new principal was very easy to make. Ms. Jem possesses exceptional leadership qualities. She's demonstrated, these are demonstrated by her daily interactions with students, staff, families, and community members. Her professional skills, personal warmth, and dedication to the school are a perfect match for the high quality educational experience that Deerfield Elementary School staff provides for our students. I'm delighted to announce that Ms. Jem's appointment as principal, we are fortunate to have such a strong leader for our school community. Thank you, Tina. Congratulations. <laughs> Very excited. I'm honored to be here yeah, sure. with, with everybody, and the um, support has been overwhelming from staff and community and faculty. So it's great. I'm excited to continue. Great. <laughs> We're excited to have you. Yeah. For sure. We're very excited to have you. And I know it's not entirely appropriate policy for us to all, you know, pop a bottle of bubbly or anything, but <laughs> we did just go through the holiday. So, in the holiday spirit, I thought that on behalf of the school committee, at least Tina could maybe. Don't open it. Don't open it. Don't open it. Oh, thank you. Bring it home. Thank you. Should be going to Belgian Town Pop. I'm good. Right. All right. No, that's that's wonderful news, and you've certainly brought some. Wonderful vibes and uh, to the school, which you appreciate it. And you also, this is now a decision. It's a great decision. It's also going to save us all yeah. a lot of effort and time, and we can just jump right into focusing on what's important, which is yeah. teaching and leading the school. So, awesome. thank you for accepting. Great. Thanks. Thank you for deciding, uh, and we're going to move right along. Great. Uh, <coughs> the new business proposed <coughs> presentation. Who's handling that? Okay, so <clears throat> that would be me. Okay. Um, I gave you a packet, um, and um, <clears throat> dated January third, two thousand nineteen. So my head's already in two thousand nineteen. <laughs> so I, I had already printed them off, and I didn't want to. <laughs> so I've already put us forward a year. So just excuse that, and I'll correct it. You're always ahead of us. Uh, I'm always in three years, it's, and it, I just never know which year we're talking about. Um, so if you start, if you look at page 120, this is um, a page that Dr. Carey introduced to us last year, and um, it, we call it our student and staff data sheet. And on the left, this is our current actual uh, October 1st census, which is what our funding will be based on. And then I just project down, um, <clears throat> we don't, for the next year, but we don't have kindergarten enrollment yet. So the seven that you're seeing, those are my pre-Ks that I know are moving up that um, mm -hmm. uh, Kim McCarthy, our early child coordinator, uh, provided for us. So we know that that number is going to be higher uh, once kindergarten enrollment starts. And uh, Tina, do you know what date that is? I don't. Is it the end of January though, or February, or? Actually, yeah. No, I'm not sure either. I know we moved it up, but I don't remember to what. And on the right-hand side is the changing in staffing, uh, the number of staff. And along the bottom, we show you our teacher, uh, our credentials. So um, we have eight teachers with bachelor's degrees, one teacher with a bachelor plus 15, 27 with master's degrees, five with master's plus 15, two with master's plus 30, and seven with masters plus 45 or a CAG. So our, our, our staff is very well educated. Um, so we're showing a change in positions in the instructional assistance of three. 
Um, and if you turn to page, well, it doesn't say it's page two. I don't know why it doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's the only page that doesn't. This is um, our summary of changes that we take uh, that that we take you through. So right now, our FY18 budget is four million five eighty eight eight fifty one. Um, we do have um, a negotiated contract for two and a half percent, which added seventy thousand five hundred nineteen dollars. <throat> Uh, the steps cost us $35,047. We have a potential degree change that will be $1,018. We have new longevities of $3,500. Uh, changes in staffing and savings on new hires, we had a reduction of $116,146. Uh, an increase in three instructional assistant positions will cost us 68826 and those are the three you Can saw. Can we interrupt you or would you rather we don't and have you go through <coughs> this first? Whichever is your desire. So I'm just want to, so right now you're talking this, you're talking about next year's budget right mm -hmm. here? Yes. Okay. So, okay, so just the, the FY18 and 19s are confusing me again. Okay, uh, so I start with where so we are where and you then are where and we're going. And where you're going. Okay, and so then I'm just curious how, how you figure we have I understand budgetary how we have savings this year, for instance, because we had a principal leave and we have, we're not we don't have a full time vice principal like we had before. So the savings in this year's budget, but how are you predicting already the changes in staffing for next year? That's because the money is already in that four million. So taking it off of the forty five eighty eight at the right, top. Right, and I'm going to reuse and I'm going to reuse it. So you're sh okay. All okay. Right. Yeah. So Just it totals 116146 and then we're going to add it back okay. by adding three instructional assistants at a cost of 68826 okay. um, And then we change the funding for some of the positions from the school choice budget, adding another 64326 mm -hmm. And when we get to that page, you'll remember that every year now our school choice is going down, mm -hmm. so our reliance has to has to go down. So we're moving people off of the school choice and onto the regular budget. Right. Um, we're putting a, uh, not for non-union positions, um, uh, five, about 5,156, and we had a decrease in retirement buybacks of 6,339. Now we did have an increase in um, central office expenses, um, and that was mainly, even though we had savings with the building being gone, the mainly that was due to the uh, addition of the food service director uh the, the cost of that and i'm just checking your percentage right now um if it went up or it went down <clears throat> deerfield went from 2886 up to 2910 with your population so your uh, allocation went up and we added the cost of the uh, food service director, so the total was $15,775. Uh, we're looking for an increase in our hardware of about $15,000. Uh, there's $15,000 in the line. Uh, our, our technology director would like to see 30. Our, um, what do you call those things, smart boards are mm -hmm. aging, mm -hmm. and the replacement parts are almost as expensive as buying new uh, hardware, so he would like to see us do that. Uh, we got notified from the town that they're going to start using, uh, charging us for the sewer, mm -hmm. so we had to add five thousand three hundred and twenty dollars for that. Uh, the transportation, uh, four thousand one sixty-three. This is based on a five-year contract, and I am guessing, based on trends, this is um, based on a uh, consumer index report that the December is not out. But the last four months has I was like about 2.6 change, so I'm estimating about a change, an increase of about 1.83. So that's just a guess right now until the consumer index report gets finalized. Quick, quick question: the increase in sewer charges are those to the central office or to the school? To the school. Okay. And 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 Frontier got hit even more. Frontier right. is going to get hit like thirty thousand, and we've got an abatement in because we have an irrigation system that mm -hmm. doesn't dump into the sewer, but they're charging the meter. Mm -hmm. So we're, we got to meet with the town on that because that also that, it does also affect the town of Deer. What mm -hmm. what affects Frontier affects all four towns. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, we will be meeting with them to discuss that. 
um, decreases. Um, in order to fund the hardware costs of 15,000, we looked at our electricity costs, the trend, and we think we can reduce that by 15,000. Um, our network and software costs uh, altogether went down about 6,402. And again, that's based on um, the percentages and, and how we're allocating some of the softwares. Um, we had a decrease in our SPED testing and assessment of 5,000 and a decrease in our other SPED services of 1560 for a net change of an increase of $138,203, which is 3.01%, and would bring our Deerfield Elementary budget to $4,727,054. So pages three. Have, have you included, uh, again, back to this changing and staffing and saving on new hires. Mm -hmm. Where did you put back in the positions that will be filled? Uh, so the so VA, I will have a assistant principal. So <coughs> right now, um, Dr. Carey and um, Tina and our curriculum director Louise have been in conversations yeah. about what changes they want to make. So I'm using that as a place marker until they finalize their plans. <coughs> with what they're doing. Using what as a place marker? The savings. Okay, but that, okay. But that's. Yeah, there's an assistant principal. But now I'm hearing there is not in this list here, though. No, there is. So what do you mean using as a, pl a place, place so holder? So we're saying that we could save 116000 but if there's changes that w that, that want to be made, that. that but, but does that 116 include the fact that we are saving money by not having an assistant principal this year? No, the, the, we saved two hundred and six dollars. So, we, Tina was making eighty five two oh six, and Dr. Carey asked me to budget it, the position at eighty five thousand. So, we, for, for the new for the new one. That's, that's all I yeah. ask. So, the, so the new AP is in this budget. Yes, she is. Okay, he okay. or she is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So there's gonna. I think what what you're asking me there's. They haven't really, we haven't got to the point of restructuring yet and, and scheduling and seeing if there could be savings by using people in different ways. And so that's really, we just haven't gotten to that point yet. But. And we, again, we have to wait for the kindergarten enrollment. We've got three kindergarten teachers. We've got three sections. Are we going to have three? Are we going to have three sections worth of children enrolled? Mm -hmm. So we. So there's a lot of you know. Um, no, no, no. A, li a lot of unknowns still at this point. Grade two sits at 52 enrolled in three classes, right? Two, we have two in second grade this year. Two in second grade this year. Okay. Two in third grade? Three, three um, sections in every other grade. Yeah. And third grade with 46, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to the wrong number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> next year. Never mind. There's 53 kids move. in grade three yeah. right now. Yeah. Right. Grade three next year is what I was looking at. Right, there's only two sections. And then I was looking at grade two next year. And there's three sections. Which is grade one this year, which right. has three sections. It would be three sections next year. Yes. 52 students in three sections, okay. That's about 17 per class. Mm -hmm. where, where do you see the... Um, the three additional instructional assistants being placed, or do you have plans, or where? Yeah, where any ideas on that? to um, provide more support in the classroom, mm -hmm. looking at um, small, it's, it's small group instruction. Right. So we're we're looking at them to be able to be in the classroom supporting. Because right now we we don't have um, no. enough staff to provide an IA or support in each classroom, and that would be a vision. I don't think that I don't, that's not going to happen. I'm, think moving forward given the, the position that we're in budget wise. But that would be a, a That's what you'd like to see. Like, yeah, I'd love to see that support. And I think that um, we did a school improvement survey in parents and families and teaching the staff and that's what we're hearing as a vision from everyone. Right. So they it's sort of an interventionist position right. and they would be get a higher level of training so that 
that they can sit down and do a math group while the teacher is working with a math group and the, uh, another group is in the classroom doing independent work. And also, too, with our literacy program. Uh, we have a great literacy program, it, and it's also pretty well scripted. So uh, with some extra training and some help, um, these extra IAs will be able to help our neediest students. But really what they're finding is that we kind of need to kick it up a little bit in math. Just mm -hmm. really put a strong, you're doing so well in literacy, a, a stronger focus on math. And with uh, this kind of uh, added support, not only are they getting that excellent coverage in literacy, they're also getting, you know, we want to be able to provide that same level of support for math. <laughs> we're moving towards a tiered intervention, um, mm -hmm. and with that, to provide tier two interventions to all students, whether we are in an IEP or not, or social emotional, right. and we have the high level of those students coming in with that um, vulnerability, if you will, with the sure. social emotional. The small group instruction helps with that, but also we're hoping to train um, these IAs to deliver instruction under the supervision of the, the teacher in the classroom. Right. So it would hit all students. Um, right, they don't benefit. Yeah, everything. Okay. Can I just ask a, a census question, just so we're not confused? On that on that page one, the we do not add in the number of students you have listed as special ed to the total. They're already in the total. Correct. Yeah. Okay. They're in the total. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In the total. So I think. Oh, right. so, yeah. So in fact, so and do they? And they. This is the census, and it includes school choice already in yeah. these numbers. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Okay. As of October first, so. we had 401 students in the building. Gotcha. Yep. 71 of those 401 are on IEPs. Got it. That's what that means on the right. Okay. Yep. Okay. So in grade one, we have 47 students in three classes. Yes. Right. Yes. Right yes. now. Yes. The only section uh, we have two of is grade two this year. Correct. Yes. Mm-hmm. So these NESDEC studies are coming true. No. Uh, what's the NESDEC study? The po population. The population. We, uh, when um, Superintendent Barrett was here, and this was the, this is what helped uh, started precipitated the school choice question. Yeah. Was that we the census was projecting that we would only have enough kindergartners coming in for two. Right. sections, right. and we would not need that third section, and we needed sure. the town was saying that don't put a third section full of school choice kids right. in. Sure. If Deerfield only has two sections, yep. only have two sections. Right. Yeah. But that hasn't been true. So grade two, that year it was true. Right. But grade one, we had to have three. This year we had to have three. <coughs> and we'll have we'll see what's coming for next year. So what do you mean when you just said the projections are coming true? The I said they're not coming true. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. That's NESDEC what I was say, they're not. NESDEC's yeah. projections yeah. aren't coming gotcha. true. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Not for our school. No. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and and they're really off the charts for Sunderland because Sunderland's just is that right? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So after you look at your summary page, the um, the detail for the town appropriation uh, is there for you to look at, and that mm -hmm. goes through page. Um, Twenty. You know, there's a reason we have two thumbs. Okay. So then, there we go. On pages. Okay. So that goes through page ten of twenty is the school committee uh, appropriation being requested from the town of Deerfield. Starting on page 11 of 20, you'll see the proposed, and this should say 19 budget. It's just pulling over from those previous pages, but then you're seeing the other funds that we're, gonna, that we're using. So if you go to the last <coughs> page of that, uh, which is, 18 of 20, you'll see that we're going to use $481,047 worth of school choice. Our SPED revolving, we're going to use $79,016. Our early childhood, we're going to hopefully use 
Um, I'm still waiting to hear from Ms. McCarthy on that, if they're going to be able to hold that amount. Uh, Title I provided us this year $29,242. i am afraid that that probably will be reduced, but it's difficult to assess. Um, and then the uh, 94-142 SPED grant will provide us with $104,712. So while we're asking the town to provide $4,727,54, the actual total spending for the school for 19 would be $5,613,440. So what does that compare to for 18? I'm bad to ask you, sorry. But I, I'm going to do that right here. Hang on, I'm going to go back. But is it on page 11? Uh, I'm going to pull up my 18 budget and see what we have. Five million four seventy two nine sixty. Five million four seventy two nine sixty. So we're up one hundred and forty thousand four hundred and eighty dollars. Which is what percent? Well, if you look, Sorry, it. most of it's on the town. Mm -hmm. Since we're asking them for an increase of 137, yep. 138, so that would be. What was that number again? You said it was five million four seven two nine sixty. Five million four seventy two nine sixty. Yeah. So it's like a two point five six seven. Increase. Total budget is a two point two and a half percent increase, and the the reason we're showing three point oh one percent is because we're shifting one point five percent in school choice funding. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, I have a I have a page in here to show you how I'm trying to balance that, mm -hmm. um, and that is on page nineteen of twenty. I've showed you what we projected to spend in 18 and actually what we will have. Um, and then what we're projecting, again, my numbers are off. This should be nine. The right-hand column should be 19. We just got our projected revenue for this year for 18, which is what we saved for 19, which um, is 423,580. Uh, what we did get for 17 was 553,818. And now we're projected to get 423,580. Mm -hmm. So you can see we are, as our sixth graders are going down, are graduating and matriculating up, our, our revenue is going down. Mm -hmm. So what I'm proposing for 19 is to, and this is up to your vote, to continue the arts partnership support of $7,500 um, and the staffing uh, to be at 473547 and this year it's at 498546 but that will go down because I am, as I earlier mentioned, shifting some of that to the town. So we would have a projected balance of $241,048 to use um, in case we had, uh, you know, well, uh, we did have the boiler, the, bo the hot water heater blow up, so it would be two forty one for emergencies. Um, and especially, we, we have no contingency for SPED, so if anybody moved in that was, was uh, you know, a high SPED cost, we would have that money available there for use. So um, you want to change these to 2019? Yes. <laughs> and then the last page I wanted to, um, is, is new, and I just wanted to show you, this is our SPED revolving account, um, and right now, we, ha we started the year with $88,547, and we only have one child that's tuitioned in uh, for $51,000. But we're using three IA positions. And so we'll have a projected balance of $60,531, but this is another, we cannot continue to staff three IAs when we only have one tuition coming in. Right. 
So you've this is something that we're move. gonna have to. Move. And yeah, but I mean, we could we could tuition in another kid at, at any moment. You mm -hmm. never know when, when when other school districts could come looking for this program. So, but there's you know I just want to bring to your attention that there's that that's out there that that, that there's positions there that might might need to move in fiscal year 20. Mm -hmm. And when you say per schedule, are these specific, these three IA positions specific people for this specific yes. tuition to child? Mm -hmm. They they work in the LEAP program with these students. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so what, if, if we so only if they, have if, one tuition in, yeah. two of those IAs are technically working with Deerfield kids. Right. So they should be on the Deerfield budget. Right. But because we've saved the money in the account, we've been able to continue to support them through the tuitions. Mm -hmm. But at some point, we're going to hit the wall with that. Mm -hmm. And are those IAs easily um, are they specialized here, or are they easily transferable to other needs if that runs out, or there's no need for them in this particular I think program. these, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. Tina, but because of the program, I think they get some specialized training through the SPED program, through our SPED director, Karen Ferrandino, um, because they are working with specialized children. Um, they, uh, they do have a little bit more training. Contractually, they get paid um, differently because they are working with more challenging students. So that would be our first blush. Well, seems, as first blush, it seems pretty um, uh, good and not as painful as some past mm -hmm. initial presentations. I'm glad we did the work last year. Sorry? I'm glad we did the work last year, or else it would have been serious. Mm -hmm. I agree. This year. Yes. Mm -hmm. It made a difference. Well, I thought we were still projecting some difficulties last year, even with those yeah. changes. So I'm just sort of wondering what... It was the good job that, that prior to her yeah. departure, Janine and Tina together with their, <coughs> with their hires, we had projected them at mid-range and they hired some really good new staff Okay. So we, we were yeah. able to save some, some money there. Okay. And in addition to that, there were some really um, slight slight cuts, but we did make some cuts last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, is the step sort of number similar to past years, the 35,000 step? Um, uh, I can, did I leave this up here? It was 18. I can tell you that the steps last year were 40,942. Okay. So if you, if you look, if you look down at back at page one, most, most of our staff are already at the masters plus 15 30 so mm -hmm. you've got you know you've got 27 people at their masters so could there be more steps coming absolutely um this bachelor's plus 15 you, you know that person's on the track to get their masters mm -hmm. um so but masters 15 masters 30s masters 45 or kegs I, I would say those people are probably educationed out at this point in their career and um, any, uh, I know we, uh, any retirements announced? I assume not yet because we would have a number in here for possible costs of. Uh, there is, an, uh, there is a there is a retirement, um, but it's not going to cost as much as those retirements from the year. previous year. Um, so, so we're going. Not really to item. So we still save six thousand dollars. Oh, decreasing buyback. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So there are, at least there are some at least in the budget, one, but, but you're others. estimating less. Yeah. yeah, okay. I'm still reading out of the savings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and did we, um, did we, anybody, do we want to have a discussion about today or not about these new hires? Looks like they're increasing three positions. Mm -hmm. Is that the, that's sort of the big change I see in the, in the budget? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Am I missing something? I don't know. Um, do you want to tell us the need for that or the what's happening or why? Essentially, we, we, we talked about it a couple of minutes ago, but to, to address... Hopefully, before that as well. 
Yes. Um, these, what we're looking for is to provide, um, again, a multi-tiered system of support for the students, for all students, not just the needy students. And to do that, we need more feet on the ground or hands in the classroom to, to provide, alter, not alternative, but a second, a double dose of math centers or a math group and then a double dose of a literacy group. But for the math group, while the teacher takes one group and focuses on that group, the goal is to have IAs come in and work with another group to double dose or reinforce what the teacher has taught and then they move and so it's a rotating uh, situation in the classroom and then that group rotates into independent work. But the idea would be to, as a multi-tiered you know, support system is to have enough people that we can schedule them so that most of the children will get a double dose during the the more the their instructional period of math and our instruction is shifting to more of a small group instruction. And this just allows um, us to target and have a focused intervention for those students in a small group and providing the support to the to the teacher. We've done a lot of um, data collecting and surveying and looking at the best practices, even with the math scores, um, not just in math, but we do this in reading and writing as well. And it just um, helps us to provide that targeted intervention and meet the students where they are in that classroom. So, Is that your question? Yeah, you know, so, no, no, it's okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm just ferreting stuff out because, yes. you know, it's what we do. And basketball game doesn't start for another 45 minutes. <laughs> just kidding. They want to get there so, early. Uh, <laughs> you want to get there early. Somebody's got to go inside, so. That's right. <laughs> Um, I guess so another way to frame it is, is are, you looking, are, are we looking to hire three people who have a particular specialty or are we just, is it more of a scheduling issue that we just like to have three more bodies to do similar sort of work that's already being done to support teachers and individuals? I think it's two and threefold, if you will. I think that we are light staffed on the IAs and when you start pulling IAs to cover lunch and recess duty, there's a big gap in um, the services that we can provide to students and um, and then support the classroom as well. So there's a big gap that the, that the IEs are out of the classroom. So the, that piece set aside, and right now we're scheduling two. I had to move up to three IAs out at lunch and recess. That's three IAs that are out of the classroom for a chunk of time for safety, because we have sometimes 60 kids mm -hmm. outside. So three, mm -hmm. I think, is adequate. Um, with that said, we're also moving to small group instruction to meet the, like what we were, we were talking about. So this provides more of an instruction. I, I'm moving towards um, IA meetings at the month that have an objective and a, and a goal and using um, once a month IA trainings to provide um, professional development to them. So alongside that, when they're working in the classroom, my goal would be to keep it consistent in the classroom. So when they're working in the classroom, they're also going to get some more on-the-job training. So if there is a literacy footprint so the teacher's doing that, um, there will be on-the-job training as well. So multifaceted. Yeah. Um, and I know a few years ago we sort of tightened, tightened uh, scheduling around um, enrichment, sort of special, sort of music, PE, maybe even an art. Um, and I guess I'm, again, I'm just throwing stuff out there about that. So um, I assume nothing in this budget is, is taking away anything in those areas from our kids? Nothing. Okay. And then the flip side of that would be, um, you know, is there a movement to increase time in those offerings or anything like that um, if we were able to? Would that if be we desired? To. If we were able to. Um, I'm not sure that would be a priority at this point. If, yeah. um, if we had money and we were going to increase something, I'm not sure that would be a priority. I would probably be looking for more support. Um, in classrooms, because the three IAs, to, like I said, isn't yeah. free and sufficient work to yeah. see us. What, okay. what would you like to see? Every well, classroom have an IA? Um, I, well, I would, uh, so my initial proposal when I went to the, to the meeting was um, seven, so mm -hmm. I would like to see an increase of seven. That would allow, and I, it, it, and I it would allow um, us to hit more, more students and provide just about one 
um, consistent instructional assistant in a classroom to su support students. Right. Um, because if you look at our numbers, it looks like we have a lot of IAs, but we also have a lot of um, students that require some support just um, to be in a classroom. Right. So that, that would be my goal, to hit that small group instruction, which is kind of where we're, we're moving towards. We've done a lot of work around the math. I know mm -hmm. Louise had presented sure. to you. Um, and that's where, where we're seeing the shift in kind of education of that small group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we had talked about today when we had our principals meeting is to, on the page one, where it says IAs, instructional assistants, what, we, what I'd like to do is to actually have a number that is the, just the, IA, the IAs that are in the general, general population for multi-tiered systems of support, and then have the other, uh, in the parentheses, the number of IAs that are uh, paid by grants, paid by um, uh, tuitions, but this, the IAs that are specifically hired for children that are IEP driven. So mm -hmm. a child that has a feeding tube or a child that can't walk mm -hmm. um, would have a, a, an IA with them all day. And other students that have uh, social emotional issues where mm -hmm. they, they, they just can't, they can't, they just need someone with them to help them regulate themselves. Those kinds of IAs versus the ones that are in the general, because it looks like there's a lot of IAs, 28, IAs, 27, okay, we have 20, I don't know, but 20, 27 IAs, but out of that list, I, I there's many of them that, um, are already assigned. Yeah, there's a high specific. portion of those that are assigned. How many would you say them. are assigned individually to students? Well, when you consider LEAP and... We have an ECBI program. I can, I can I can count yeah, that for you guys. pretty quickly, because I am... Um, Johnny on the spot. <laughs> so IAs are not actually assigned to students. Right. So that's the other okay. piece of it. Aren't. Are not so I didn't assigned. mean to, okay, I wasn't right. trying to use a technical term. I was just following, following <laughs> yeah. up on yeah. what yeah. superintendent was saying right. about well, yeah, but, more one-on-one. Um, -on -one. Some um, IAs affiliated. We do have some one-on-ones, but we have some IAs affiliated with uh, the ECBI program, which is um, for the early childhood behavior interventionist. And they have, they work closely with our ECBI teacher and they work with multiple students. So it's not just one right. student that requires that support or service. So, so we have eight. So there's, uh, there's, we have eight that are considered either in the LEAP program right. or classified as student support yep. based on IEP or 504. And then our early childhood instructional assistants, there's seven of them, they're considered technically SPED because it's a SPED modeled program. So they're considered SPED as well. So that would be 15. Right. Um, uh, right. So when you look at our IAs, we have a lot of them down in pre-K. Mm -hmm. Yeah, doing that good early work. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. which is what we want to see those right. skills for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Okay, so in other words, that number, you know, this, this number is really, isn't as large as some people may think it is because some of them are targeted in a more specific way. And I'm going to make, I'm going to, uh, I made that note, Dr. Karen, so, so I can much. break out the, I will break out um, a structural assistance, uh, what we'll call regular and instructional assistance, SPED assistance. And yeah, we can break that out. And so when the request for three, it's, it's not for IEP driven needs, it would be for the general population for mm -hmm. our multi-tier. Mm -hmm. Um, Essentially, they work with everybody. They yeah. work with everyone because yeah. that's that's the way we're an inclusion school. We, our philosophy is inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, has the um, has, has the budget process so far within the building included faculty, or is this sort of coming here and then going to faculty? Just exclusively input, and then this follow on with that would be: Are there other priorities that you heard about coming from? staff and faculty that so it hasn't directly gone to um, staff and faculty but we did have a school improvement survey that just went out not too long ago that really targets all of these areas and that is what was taken into consideration for our first blush kind of like uh, I think that was your term mm -hmm. that we're just kind of looking at it and what would the changes be I, I think we have one faculty member here but um, I, this would be uh, the vision is reflected in what 
we were here in the school improvement planning survey. All right, great. I have no further questions right now. Anyone else have a <laughs> input? Okay. Or is it? What's that? <laughs> no further questions. <laughs> Meeting them. <laughs> Giving up the floor. His lawyer job. <laughs> <I know. laughs> okay. Let's turn Good. it over Not to the prosecution. That's right. <laughs> Not hearing any. I don't, I don't have anything at this stage. So, right, so. I think it's a nice first pass. Yeah. You know, with make yeah. that comment. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, if you're addressing me, that's good. I, I apologize. Not apologize, but I'm sorry. I missed the discussion on the school choice revote re -vote and explanations of philosophy on school choice. Um, but I, I'm, yes, we are trying to pare it back from where we where we were running pretty high levels, but at the same time, if I'm looking at a class of 47 students with three teachers in first grade as you move into second, there's the possibility there to add, since we are participating in school choice, to have slots available. And I would ask that the administration take a look at that. As long as the three sections exist and, you know, it doesn't impact negatively on the class and the needs of that 47 aren't such that they're really, I mean, and there was a conscious effort why we retained three mm -hmm. classes for that, There's that group. There's a lot group. of needs in that group. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but we can look at it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just something to consider as you plan. Um, and that's staunch the uh, outflow of school choice funds. Right. So. And that's a discussion and a vote that's presented to us somewhere in the, the May yeah, to the end, towards the end of the budget. Yeah. Okay. So, so look, our plan from here um, in February is um, we, we want to do um, a PowerPoint presentation um, and, uh, that Dr. Carey will present. And this will be um, the preview of what we're going to go to the town with. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, Dr. Carey and, um, and I meet with the four town administrators, and they have given us some feedback of what the towns would like to see the budgets. They don't like, you guys like the numbers. They not so much right. like the numbers. <laughs> um, they, they'd like to do, um, I'll see a little bit of different information. So Dr. Carey is going to be taking this raw data and turning it into a PowerPoint for the towns based on what they've given us for inputs. But of course, we would run that by you guys first before we went to the town. The goal, the goal is to hopefully by February have it ready and to show it um, at the school committee meeting so that you can see that information uh, in, in a more, um, you'll, you have this information, but also more graphic information and it might help to bring up more questions, um, more suggestions, or more understanding. We've also changed, you know, when we developed the budget, we've also changed that process. Instead of just myself, Patty, and a principal, we had everybody at the table. We had a director of technology, director of facilities, uh, elementary director and or secondary director of uh, education, secondary education or elementary education. We had special ed, so the early room, child. early childhood, so the room was full and we all looked and focused on each different school. Each school had a meeting and we focused on what is it that we'd like to see, what are our dreams, what, it, what to, to take a great school and make it even better, what will we need to do? What is, what, is, what is our vision for this budget here? And we all put our heads together. We worked a couple, three, four, three hours for it, take notes, uh, balanced needs. You know, there is always a balance between technology and personnel, human, our human resources, and, and then the facility piece, how much do we want to put in for there? What, what would be a goal that we'd like to keep in the budget outside of the capital? expense or capital request. So we've, we've already put in some hard work and uh, a lot of it was based on the school improvement plan. So now we're going to take that information and even make it more understandable and more, more readily available for people to really get a visual, get an understanding of it, and then bring that out and perhaps 
bring it out to families, maybe a PTO meeting, certainly a school committee meeting, uh, put some more information on the website. Uh, when we go to the finance committees with, with the town selectmen, have that information available to them. I've also asked all the uh, principals and all the directors to write a narrative on their piece. What, to, what is it that we do? I was asked um, in the beginning of the year by the town administrators uh, to provide more narrative, not just the numbers. The, the numbers are great, we're very transparent, but for the public, the people, the actual taxpayers and stakeholders, what is it we're doing? What, okay, so, you know, last year I brought in, a, you know, a sheet that's, well, we have this many IAs, this many teachers, but what is that all about? And so today at our principals meeting, we shared all of our information and helped one another um, really, really look at it from a critical viewpoint of I'm a person outside, I'm just, a I'm not just, a, I'm John Q. Public, I'm looking at this, what can I learn about the school from this information? And that's, we, I think what, what I'm hearing was that they want more uh, holistic picture of what the budget's about, not just the numbers. Thank you for that, that's exactly, exact, I mean that's what I'm hearing in town. Um, I was asked to just request, um, I've, um, our finance committee, the selectmen, um, selectmen in, uh, I was talking to in Sunderland, would also love a, a meeting if we could get together. I think when, you know, we were thinking the end of this month, and I know that's too soon for you, so um, sometime in February, if we could get together um, the four towns in the school, and not just um, thinking about this one year, but um, four or five years out or, or kind of where we see the education going, what, what we're doing in all these different schools and um, just an organic conversation on, on one, the budget obviously and what resources we have and how we can think about the trends that are changing and how, how we can move forward on that stuff. So It gets more difficult after this year because we don't have a contract. Yes. So it's hard to talk yeah, sure. about numbers yeah, and a that's five fine. year projection when but there's nothing new. Not number projection, just what our vision No, but the direction gotcha. of education in the next five years. Yeah. I understand that. But, but yeah. I, I'm just saying, like, for fiscal year 20, when we start yeah. talking about that, I mean, there's a, there, need, there needs to be a negotiation. It, that the, budget, the budgeting process gets harder when sure. there isn't a contract negotiated. Yeah. Well, we can still, we can still meet and discuss. Mm -hmm. So um, whenever you, you know, I know you guys have a ton of meetings a month, but if you single out a few days, it would work for you all. Um, I know that I was just asked to kind of make a request for a meeting for, the, for all four towns. So whenever you have, and then with school committee members to come. It would be great kind of too joint. after, you know, we, we have the frontier number. Together. Right, exactly. Because they're a big piece. Yeah, absolutely. Of the yep. four towns. Yep. That'd be fine. So. All right. Great. Great. Thank you. Uh, cut you off. Um, okay, good. Well, it's a school committee meeting. It's not a select board meeting. That's correct. <laughs> Take that business. Uh, you have 30 minutes now. Uh, okay, so thank you uh, again for the budget presentation. It's a great first, first look. Um, and if nobody objects, we're going to move along. We're going to be talking about that a lot more next meeting. And um, let's see, where's, where's my... Principal report. Principal report, we go to that? Um, yeah, I, we've just met, so I don't have a large principal report, but a lot of classroom news to share. A new format. <laughs> mm -hmm. A new format. Okay. No? Well, mm, no? usually I have uh, okay, my piece and the teachers um, and faculty and staff and right. put their piece in. So we're just sharing classroom news now. So um, the Falcon class, Suzanne Ryan's uh, preschool class. Is, teaming up with Layla Hazen's with uh, Tinkering Buddies, which is new and kind of exciting, where they're building things and it's um, inspired by our STEM curriculum. So that's a nice addition. And first graders are learning about nonfiction stories and using knowledge to support their information story writing. And they're, um, looks like they're writing all about uh, books. Miss Kennedy and Miss Danax class have just begun a new unit on westward expansion and students will be in the historical time period of reading fiction, nonfiction, and then writing an informational piece from the perspective in that time. And then um, we had our book fair, and it looks like um, 
we earned about $2,300 was raised from that book fair, so it would be nice to have some nice. books for them. And in Spanish, it looks like they're, we've been right along learning the words of winter. We're going to be making some fleece. All right, I'm going to try my Spanish here. Bufandas? Bufandas. I'll have to ask Chuck later if I got that right. Am I good? All right. Yo hablo de español, okay? Yeah. No. Okay. Nosotros encerramos. <laughs> I can't say it either. <laughs> oh, you're going to encerramos. Yeah. So in the first period, we're learning their numbers up to 100 and singing. <laughs> Nosotros. Ooh. Come on, you're on. Patty, what are they singing? We shall overcome. Okay, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, two days back, and we're in it. <laughs> right. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any um, further superintendent's report? No, nope. um, actually, my report was really just to explain where we are with the budgeting and how we got to this point and what our plans are. Okay, super. Collaborative? Has not met. Has not met. Super. Uh, and I don't have any further report to make. Um, I don't think we have a need for executive session. Is there something, Patty, you want to? Oh, no. When we, we, we were tomorrow. talking about the weather, when we started the meeting, there were mm. five closings. There yeah. are now 42. Closings. Oh, wow. That was enough. <laughs> That's, That's exactly where I was going. To see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's see All I have good. to do is push the button and the message will go out. I've already recorded it. I just, you know, I have to tell you, Mohawk is closed. Uh, Irving, uh, um, let's see. Orange is closed. Orange, yeah. And right uh, you're not going to make this a school. <laughs> you're not going to make it a school committee decision, are you? That, no? I wish, because then it wouldn't be yeah. on me. <laughs> so, uh, if we don't have anything else to talk about on the on here, I think I move to adjourn the meeting. Is Second, that, is that right? Yeah. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye.